And we're recording. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Hi, I'm Sam. And I'm Mason. And <laughs> <laughs> we've I've been drinking. <laughs> and My then, company. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, this movie doesn't even have that. It's not because it's a movie. That's true, but you still want to say it for continuity purposes. Yeah. And, but you notice I didn't say that you know it's good. Uh huh. So <laughs> some truth well, in advertising. Is that a, is that a shade to this movie? Are you shading the movie already? Yes. Yes, okay. I am. That's fair. It's not a good movie. Like, okay. Oh, so by the way, we, you can probably read by the title, but we watched um, Red Wine in the Dark Night. It's a 20. Okay, I have a question about that before we begin. Is it Red Wine and the Dark Night, or is it Red Wine in the Dark Night? I thought it was Red Wine in the Dark Night. I have seen it so many ways, and I don't know what the name of this fucking movie is. I feel like it's one of those things that just doesn't have, like, a good direct translation in English, maybe. Maybe. Because, like, wine is a character's name, and night is a character's name, and wine is not inside of night unless he's the top. So it doesn't make sense for it to be red wine in the dark night. I dark, don't know. Dark night in the red wine. Yeah, there you go. Dark Knight in the Red Wine. Yeah, that's what we're gonna call this. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a 2015, I don't know, okay. <laughs> I don't know what genre this is. Because horror. it is, it's horror. Oh, yeah, it's, yeah, okay, sure. It's a horror movie um, in 2015, and it stars Fluke of Until We Meet Again fame. This was a fairly early role for him. I think it was like his breakout role. Um, he's really good in it. I like him a lot. Basically, he plays this high schooler who um, finds a vampire and then he takes the vamp- the vampire has amnesia. He takes the vampire home and um, harms people to get the blood for the vampire to survive. That's mm -hmm. the movie. Um, it's like an hour and 40 minutes. And at no point do you know where in that hour and 40 minutes you are. You are blindly stumbling through this movie, hoping it's almost over. And then you check the runtime and you're like, oh my God, there's an hour left. And then you continue drinking. Okay, so Mason gave you the abbreviated version of the plot, but let me give you a little bit more information. <laughs> uh, wine is a hoe. Uh, <laughs> in this movie, one is fucking and sucking every male he comes across who's not like extremely aggressive. Mm -hmm. But the ones who are like lightly aggressive, he's fucking them too. So I'm assuming Wine is like a high school or a college student. I'm gonna say college because I think that no. they're living in the dorms. No, no, no. He's in high school. And the reason I know this is because the entire time in the movie, I was like, I really hope that they're college age and therefore all this fucking isn't uncomfortable. And then at one point, um, one of the characters, the like older man he's fucking with the suit, he's like, I love you. And if you want to go to college, I'll support you. And I was like, oh, he's in high school. This is insane. This movie got weirder. Okay. I thought that they were college age because the character T has a dorm room. And that's where all of his friends were at when Wine was calling him when he was in the abandoned building. So I maybe... Well, maybe wine, yeah, they're the same age. So maybe wine just isn't in school because his parents run a gambling house. Do they? Yeah, that's what he tells the old man when they're fucking. He's like, yeah, I need my own apartment because my parents run a gambling house and there's strangers coming around all the time. Oh, I thought he was just lying because he needed the apartment. Wait, we should, we should explain the movie more so they know what we're talking about. Right. <laughs> okay, you go, you go, then we'll get into it. <laughs> Okay, so the movie opens with coitus being performed between T and Wine. Wine is our main character. He is the star of the movie. 
after making love, having sex, doing the do, T tells him, I've never loved you. I'm not gay. Quit telling people about us doing gay shit. Stay away from me. Bag. That's basically the way he talked about it. So Wine, who apparently has absolutely no self-esteem, gets a text message from T saying, hey, meet me at the park. And of course, he's just excited because he's like, oh my gosh, she's going to come back to me. This is great. T's friends show up like, yeah, he told us he's gay for you and loves you a lot and wants to meet you at this abandoned building because he wants to have hot abandoned sex with you. Meet him there. Wine ends up in this abandoned building, and of course, T never shows up because it was a prank run by him and his friends, so he can prove to his friends how not gay he is. And while Wine is getting ready to leave after being there, what I assume must be hours, because he showed up during daytime and left at night, uh, he hears, help, help. And like any sensible person, he's like, I'll pray for you. But then all of a sudden he loses his mind, like, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and check up on what this random voice in this abandoned building is. And he realizes it's a man. It is a hungry man. And because wine is a sucker for the peen, he's like, I'm going to find you food and I'm going to take care of you. And through a series of rejections of the food, it comes about that the only thing that this young man can digest is blood. And this is where the I can't believe y'all did this starts for me. Mm -hmm. So he falls trying to leave the building to get help for this guy that he thinks is dying. And his knee starts bleeding. And the guy is licking his knee, this trail of blood. And immediately Wine is like, you're a vampire. And I'm like, what reasonable person would jump to that conclusion? Like, the blood sucking would be weird, but also that was when I'd kick them in the face and run for my life. Mm -hmm. But who would just sit there and be like, you must be a vampire because you like blood. And so the rest of the movie becomes Wine taking care of this pretty feckless, ineffective, wimpy, baby-faced vampire. Like, this kid doesn't have fangs. He's not super strong. He doesn't seem to have any magical powers. He's just, like, some weird homeschool dude who needs somebody to bottle-feed him blood. Literally bottle-feed him blood. And then hijinks ensue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Wine fucks, like, three different people. He's, at the beginning, in love with T, and then he's like, Nope, I'm in love with Knight, who's the vampire. And then he plays, he toys along with this older man. Named Boy. Named name Boy to get an apartment. Um, we at no time know how, like, understand how Boy and Y know each other. The relationship between them is never explained in that way. Like, I don't know how they met. I don't know why they know each other. I don't know how long they've been fucking. I don't know why. They just started fucking. They just started fucking. He had never fucked Boy before, but Boy had been wanting to fuck him for years. Mm -hmm. And when he got him the apartment, he's like, can I fuck you now? And Wine's like, okay. What confused me, so at the, towards the end of the movie, he meets up with, so like Boy is constantly trying to get into contact with Wine for that dick. And he's, dropping by the apartment and calling him and Wine's like just trying to dodge it because he just basically used him. And then like in the entire third act of the movie, Boy is constantly saying how it's our apartment. It is their shared apartment. And I'm like, what? What's going on? When did that become a thing? I just thought he sucked your dick and y'all were like, you can have the apartment. But I guess it was their apartment. This I think it was I caught it as being like, this is an apartment that I own that I don't use. So I own this apartment, but you live there. So this is our apartment. I feel like that's a jump in logic that we're not given the information to. Because when they first go into the apartment, he's like, what do you think of this place? And it's already furnished when they first walk in. All the furniture is covered in like sheets, like it's been abandoned for a while or been empty for a while. Yeah. But it gave me the feeling that this is something that he owned. And he's like, you told me you needed a place to stay. I've got an apartment that no one's living in. You can live in this apartment. I just thought he was a realtor. Nah, I think that was his 
I think it was like his love shack apartment that he sets up his boys in. I think they need to explain this. Like this isn't given an explanation. And I feel like it's important to know. Because I guess Wine, again, we don't know how old Wine is. Like, it's ambiguous whether he's in college or high school. Um, it's literally up in the air. And that begs the question of what, what, what about the parents, you know? Um, yeah, I feel like, so I remember on our first video, we had mentioned this movie um, when we were talking about Tosara. And someone commented there saying that they really liked this movie because they thought it was really different for Boys Love. And I agree, it's very different for Boys Love, and I respect it for that. In fact, it's almost like them fucking around isn't like not even like that, like it, it not that it's not important because it's a real like sexual movie, but like them being gay isn't like a super big plot point or anything. Mm -hmm. um, like the main part's like the vampire stuff because it's a quote unquote horror. Um, but I also don't think that's a very fair like, statement in some ways because a thing being different doesn't mean it's good. I understand liking it, but I also think that people get confused with, I like this, therefore it's automatically good. And it's like, that's not how things work. Like there's some fundamentals to filmmaking um, and storytelling that like, just like are technical things and this movie does not follow them. Like, I think one of my biggest problems is I don't really know anything about any of these characters I don't know who Wine is before this. I don't know what he wants. Like, what was the, like, what's the objective, you know, to like keep Knight fed, to find happiness? It's not very clear what Wine wants as like a character. So there's nothing really driving the plot forward except for like things keep happening and then the movie ends and you're like, okay, but what did he want? What does he want in life? What does he want throughout this two hour almost movie? What does T want? What does Knight want? I don't know. Also, Knight has amnesia, and the backstory they give him, again, doesn't add up to anything, and I still have a lot of questions. So, I mean, spoiler alert, I'll go into the second, our last act of the movie. Or, well, I guess second act, and then, oh no, how many acts are there? Three, two, three. four? There's three acts in a movie. Okay, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I don't go to school for these things. Uh, he kidnaps T. He tricks T, his former lover who said, I never loved you, mm -hmm. into meeting him at the park and going to the abandoned building. And he's like, we're fixing to have sex. And T is excited because he's like, I'm going to bone this man. Great. And instead of having sex, he gets tied up and is basically used to become a blood bank of sorts for night. And after kind of using up T for as much as he can and realizing, I guess, that this is not a sustainable way to do things because T is about to die from being tied up. Uh, he's like, I got to find a new source. And also, boy, who I've tricked into giving this apartment, he wants more ass, so I've got to figure out what to do. And at that time, he decides, I'm going to kill two birds with st one stone. Pretty literally. I'm going to go ahead and release T from bondage but I'm also going to trick boy into going into this abandoned building to rape me. And then I'm going to kill him and get as many bottles of blood as I can. And me and my vampire lover are going to run away into the night. Now there is one huge inconsistency, which you have to have noticed. And we'll talk about that in a minute, but as he clubs boy over the head, which boy, Boy deserved everything he got in this movie. If Boy died from being hit in the head, he absolutely deserved it because when they went into the abandoned building, Wine says, I want you to rape me. And Boy says, I have always wanted to rape you. Yep. That is <laughs> everything they should have cut. Just cut it out. <laughs> so as he's trying to collect blood, Knight has followed him to the abandoned building. It is like, oh my God, I can't believe you're collecting blood. All of a sudden my amnesia is cured and I realize this is what happened to my father. My father would collect blood for me because I've always been a vampire, which no one explains how he had a human dad and he's a vampire. No one, never. It's just, never. it doesn't come up. And it, they never explain how he has amnesia. Yeah, like he, he sees his dad killing somebody, he runs away from home, gets stuck in sunlight, and when he wakes up, he has sucked all of his dad's blood out, which the dad gave voluntarily. The dad slit his wrist to feed his son and mm -hmm. ends up dying from, I guess, either exposure or having too much blood sucked. 
But then Knight proceeds to tell Wine, I'm going to leave you because you're killing people to save me, and I don't want that. I'll come back to you when I'm good and damn ready. And then crawls into a dumpster. Yeah, that was dumb. <laughs> like that scene, like the scene where he crawls into a dumpster harkens back to another scene earlier in the movie that was also dumb. There's a scene in the movie where, like, basically, for unprompted, for no reason, Knight is like, by the way, I remembered I can sing and play guitar. And we are at no point shown that he has remembered this. He just flat out tells us this out of thin air, unprompted. And you're like, oh, okay, cool. Like, sure, now we know something about this character. And then they walk to this dumpster, which, by the way, seems like it's in the middle of a park. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there was just, like, a bunch of dumpsters and garbage cans in a park. And Wine pops out of one of the dumpsters and is like, surprise, I found a guitar, and it's real gross, real grody, um, no strings. And then they just sit on the ground in the trash, and it's supposed to be romantic as Knight, like, fakes play guitar, but then actually sings a love song. And you're like, this isn't romantic, and this is dumb and please cut the scene out in your viewing. <laughs> um, yeah, so then at the end of the movie, when he goes to hide in a dumpster, because, like, it's going to be morning soon, I guess, and he's like, I'm going to hide out here for the next minute. He just hides in the dumpster. It is the same dumpster as however many days ago. It's not explained how many days and how much time has passed in this movie. Again, I don't know how long they've known each other. No, We don't know. This, it could have been weeks. It could have been three days. And I don't know if you felt the same way, but I remember thinking, like, this is the worst hiding spot for you because someone's going to come and take the trash. Are you hiding in the dumpster because you plan to be crushed in the dumpster truck? Because I don't know if they do it differently in Thailand, but the dumpster trucks that come around my neighborhood have compressors in the back so they can get as much trash as possible. Mm. So if they accidentally dump that dumpster into the back of the trash truck, it compacts the trash to save room. So He's going to be crushed, and I don't know if you can die that way if you're a vampire, but it just, it's the worst hiding spot. He would have done better to crawl into the sewer. Yeah. Yeah, again, it's like, it's just dumb. Like, there's no good explanation for why he did that, except for that it's uh, a throwback to an earlier scene, but the, the earlier scene wasn't even good or, like, made any sense narratively, so you're like okay like if it was like it was like like they did this in parasite too but like parasite like makes sense spoilers for parasite like there's that scene where there's that guy hiding in the basement and after you know the poor dad ends up killing the rich dad he goes and hides in the basement and like it harkens back to just like the other guy being hidden in the basement like that's kind of like the point that he went back to the basement even though logically it doesn't make as much sense, like it makes sense in the narrative because it harkens back to something we already know and something that was important. And this movie does that, but like, does it worse? Yeah, I think that the whole dumpster thing was just to make you start thinking about the guitar, which for some reason, Wine is holding the guitar when the police show up to the park to arrest him, which the question I had is, did he have the guitar with him when he went to go do his last set of murder? Or did why or did knight drop off the guitar and be like here take this like where did the guitar come from when he's in the jail and he's caressing the guitar and then all of a sudden knight shows up was that a dream did he die in the jail like because it was sunlight again so i have no idea but during the scene when knight sees that wine is draining the blood from his latest victim it is daytime it is daytime. There's sun coming through the windows how the fuck did knight get out of the apartment run through the streets and show up at the building during daytime when the last time he even opened the windows in the apartment to get daylight he was like weakened for the entire day he was like wearing a hoodie and i feel like that was their bad explanation i'm just like he wore a hoodie the sunlight didn't catch him corona fuck can't catch you <laughs> fuck out of here it's dumb i also hate like, okay, so there's a scene where he, like, gets hit by the sun, and then he's, like, weakened for, like, the entire day. And then at night, he goes out in search of wine. 
to like see where he's getting the blood from. And it's like, he's suddenly all better. And you're like, no, 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 no. One scene before you told me he was like so sick, he couldn't even answer the door. And like two hours later in the narrative, he's fine. What? What? Well, I was, the first time I was like super confused was when they were in the bathtub together and he's like, do you want to fuck? And he's like, yeah, sure. I don't know what that is, but all right. And he is making out and then night passes out. And when he wakes up, he's on the bed and wine is on the floor with both wrists slit. And I'm just like, how did we get here? Yeah. And then, and then he sees wine on the floor and he's like, wine, wake up, wine. And then Wine's like, bitch, I'm just trying to sleep. Shut up. And then Knight's like, oh, okay. And then he just lies on the floor with him. And you're like, what was the point of this whole scene? I learned nothing about anyone. This doesn't progress the narrative at all. It 0% told me anything. And I spent the entire time thinking, why are y'all lying on the ground at the foot of a perfectly good bed? Right? (laughs) I will say, I actually kind of like the first half of the bathroom scene. I think the part that I like was there's a part where like, like wine, like kind of leans forward to kiss Knight. And just, I think the way Knight acts where he's like, not really sure what's going on, but he's like, this is actually kind of nice. Like he's like, I don't know what this is, but like, I don't know, I'm into it. And he like leans in and kisses him back. Like, I thought that part was nice. I, it begs the question of consent. Because this is someone who has said, I have amnesia, I don't know my name, I don't know how old I am, I don't know where I'm from, I have no memories of anything. Right. And Knight uh, is asked a series of questions by Wine. Wine's like, I want to know how old you are, I want to know where you're from, I want to know if you have a lover, if you like boys or girls, do you want to fuck? Uh-huh. And, and it feels like he's taking advantage of, in my opinion, somebody who's kind of childlike. They Absolutely. have no capacity for saying, no, I don't want this because wine has saved his life. And he says very clearly, like, I don't know what sex is, but you saved my life. So sure, let's have sex. Right. That's not consent because he has no idea what he's signing up for. Uh huh. And that bothered me a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of uncomfortable implications in this movie. And then the outwardly expressed one in the <laughs> third act when he's like, I want to rape you. And you're like, uh... Uh, no, end the scene, cut it out. It goes on, like, he chases him through the building and tears off his clothes, and, like, he was really down for doing some raping, and Mm -hmm. that's why I couldn't even feel bad for him when he got hit over the head. I did kind of feel bad for T in a way, um, and what I felt bad for T about was not necessarily that he was being held hostage and being, like, let for blood. I felt bad for T because you could tell when the prank was happening that he's, he's afraid to come out the closet. Like his whole thing yeah. is he's afraid to come out. And it led him to do something very cruel to wine, but I don't think it was worth his life. Yeah, I think T is actually in a lot of ways the most interesting character because he has something going for him, which is he clearly loves wine, but he's too afraid to come out right now. And that's like interesting. Whereas like, I could not describe you what wine is as a character other than He's fucking everyone, you know? Yeah. I mean, one, it almost feels like it was a movie about everybody using somebody, and the only person to stop the cycle of using is Knight. When he Mm -hmm. says, I don't want you to do this for me, he's stopping the cycle there. But, like, T was using wine for sex. Wine was using boy for money and apartment. Boy was using wine to get off on his sexual fetish of being with a young boy. And wine was using night for this kind of fantasy boyfriend that he didn't have with T. Because right. night is everything that he wanted T to be. Like, he's like, I'll do anything you want. I love you because you saved my life. Even in the bar scene when the other guy shows up and like, hey, you look familiar. We want to be my boyfriend. As soon as wine comes around the corner... Knight pulls him in as like, this is wine, he is my boyfriend, and then kisses yeah. him in front of the bar. So it's like wish fulfillment on wine's part to have somebody like Knight. And like, yeah. it speaks to the immaturity of wine because his plan was, we're gonna run away together. But mm-hmm. the actual like physical limitations of Knight 
how are you going to run away together? Are you just going to tra travel in the night all the time? What is it going to stay in during the day? Mm -hmm. Like it just, <sighs> wine, wine is not sympathetic. I wish wine was sympathetic, no. but he was not. I'd be okay if he wasn't though too, but you need someone sympathetic in the movie. And I actually, I, I wrote like a whole treatment of like, okay, if, so I felt bad that we were just gonna like shit on this movie and not talk about how to fix it. So I wrote like a treatment on how would I fix it? And again, yeah, we'll get to it when we get to it. But yeah, I do acknowledge that. Cause I feel like you need someone that is compassionate to root for in this movie. Cause very yeah. few movies are good at giving you like, like characters you don't want to root for and it's still being a good movie. Like I think the only one I can think of is um, the musical movie Chicago. Everyone in that movie is a horrible asshole. They are greedy, fame hungry assholes. Everyone, um, except for one person. And he's like the only person in the movie that has any heart. And he's important to the movie because of that reason, you know? Um, this movie doesn't really have that. I also want to address, um, I feel like this movie was going for subtleties in a lot of ways. Um, I just don't think it was successful. And I feel like this is one of those movies that people would say, you just don't get it. You don't get Asian cinema. You don't get the subtleties. And it's like, it's not that I don't get it. It's just that it wasn't there. Um, I think a good example of like a director who uses subtleties are either or is basically anyone in Studio Ghibli, I feel like is the most mainstream one that I can think of. Um, especially Takahata. He has a really specific like Japanese way of telling um, stories. And like they're not movies where it's like like American movies, they like to like explicitly tell you in dialogue everything that you need to know. Um, the extreme version of that is Quentin Tarantino. Like he's the extreme of that. But like American movies like a lot of them are like, we need a lot of dialogue to keep you from being bored and to keep this going. But like a lot of Asian films try to reserve the dialogue until it's extremely necessary. And I feel like this film tried to do that, but it then didn't take the visual opportunity to give us information. Like the visuals didn't inform us of anything. And I think they tried to do something cool with the color palette. It's mostly blue with a pop of red here and there, but they didn't really lean into it. Um, and one of the things I was thinking about, it was just like a filmmaking thing. It's like, okay, if you're going to make this like a, a cooler movie in terms of the color palette, then the only one that should ever be wearing red is night. And like a lot of the other characters do wear red in like their basketball jerseys. And that's just like a small little filmmaking thing where it's like, if you color wise sectioned out the characters a bit, it would be like visually maybe tell us something a little bit more. There might be more to read into. Yeah. I would also kind of like to know if the two bloodletting victims actually died. I kind of am assuming that boy is dead because he took a massive whack to the head with both a brick and a stick. But I wonder if the reason why the police showed up at the park is because T actually lived and told the police what happened. That's what I'm assuming. I'm assuming T lived, because it seemed like for the most part, T was just malnourished. And I think if he was able to get out, like he would have just gone to the doctor and like they would have just put him under some IV and like he would have been fine, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think that's what happened. Because otherwise yeah. they have no evidence that he did it, that wine did anything, you know? Yeah. All right, so go ahead and I'll let you read your Tristies because I actually have a whole bunch of other stuff I'd like to talk about. So I want to make sure you have your time so then I can have my time. Okay, I'm just going to read it straight through. Um, I just want to say a few things before. A, I've been drinking. So, low Siento. I've been drinking. I've been drinking. Watermelon. Is that how this song goes? <laughs> Watermelon? Yeah. He says watermelon. She says watermelon. Okay, who is that? Beyonce, Drunk in Love. I don't know if I've heard that song. <sighs> yes, you have. <laughs> Maybe. I, I know I've, I've heard of Drunk in Love. What's the chorus go? We're getting off topic. We be all night in love. That song. That's from that <laughs> song? Yeah. Oh, who knew? That's the very first verse. The first line of the first verse. I've been drinking. I've been drinking. Oh. 
Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so this is just like my stream of consciousness ramble. I am not Lay saying on me. that, huh? Lay it on me. Oh, I'm just saying that like, I don't want anyone to hear me and be like, your version sucks. Like, this is just my stream of consciousness ramble. And it's not the only version. There's many ways you could go with this premise because ultimately they didn't make use of the premise. Um, the things I really focused on is I wanted characters to have motivations for anything, anything at all. Um, excuse me. Um, so here's what I came up with. Red wine in the dark night treatment. Wine is a lonely 18 year old on break from college. He is fairly poor and works part time um, at a local convenience store. His parents often work long hours to scrape by and therefore he went by a bit neglected. He's outgoing, but always seems too eager to make friends and comes off a bit strong. People think he's kind of weird. Um, thus turning people off from being his friend. He wants more than anything to feel loved and accepted, to feel like he belongs. <sighs> well, it's, I've been drinking. Um, <laughs> While working at the store, we see Wine meet various characters of the city, including Boy, a married man, make sure to get a close-up of the ring on his finger, and even a throwaway line about how his wife hates his nasty habit. Um, Boy is 25 and stops by every day to pick up a package of his favorite cigarettes and to flirt with Wine. One day, Boy walks in to get his usual brand, but they're out. He then slides his business card to Wine, saying to call him when they get back in stock or for any other reason. <laughs> smiles and leaves obviously flirting with wine however wine is currently hooking up with t another employee and has fallen in love with him wine and t both work at the convenience store t is grouchy and secure but overall likes time he's gay but due to societal pressure including his jock friends he is not out and grapples with this however he and wine start to hook up and he de and develop strong feelings for one another wine for the first time thought he was going to get what he wanted he thought he was going to get someone who loved and cared for him. Um, through T, um, sorry. Um, he thought he had found someone that might love him and accept him for who he is. There's a line in the, in the movie where um, when he's about to trap T for, to like take his blood, he says, I thought you loved everything about me. So that line could play into there where he's like, I thought you loved everything about me because that's all that he really wants in life was someone to love and accept him. Um, T's friends are from spending too much time with wine and T breaks it off in a callous manner, AKA basically the opening scene. Um, the same stuff happens with the prank. He meets the vampire. This time the vampire bites him instinctively because he's got fangs in this version. Cause I don't like that he doesn't have fangs in the other version. We need this to be more vampire-y. Um, um, but um, wine is able to kind of push him off um, quickly enough. Um, the vampire has no memory and wine views as an opportunity to, in some ways, start crafting his perfect life. Um, he brings the vampire, who wine will call night, back to his apartment, cleans him and washes him. Basically, play out the scene from the bathroom. Um, they discuss how they will feed night, and night states, I refuse to harm a human in order to live. Wine convinces night to become a homebody so he doesn't lose it and attack a human on accident. This is just a play to get Knight to stay at home and belong to Wine. Wine brings back some raw meat and or like buys a real chicken or something for him to, for him to try. Um, he, throws up the, he throws up the blood, it doesn't work. Um, and Wine realizes this, but in order to keep his newfound happiness, um, starts resorting to drastic measures. Wine contacts Boy, who had slipped him his business card earlier. During the hookup, Wine wants to play rough and ties up Boy. Um, this takes place in the abandoned building. Um, because fine, whatever, we'll just use that set. They already have it. Um, during the hookup, what else? Basically, um, basically it's the same scene except for it's consensual and they don't do the rape fantasy. And instead he's like, I want to do like some S and M fantasy where I tie you up. Um, yeah. much more comfortable. Um, um, unlike the movie, boy does not get knocked unconscious. Instead, wine takes the blood while he's awake as wine is busily um, finishing up bottling up the blood, the knots for Boy's feet become loose and he tries to run for it. However, he is slightly delirious due to, a, due to all the blood loss. Wine notices immediately and a small chase, chase, chase scene ensues, um, but Wine gets the better of him, knocks him out with a brick, and then kind of drags him back to the room and reties him securely. 
this buys wine some time as Zena has like three-ish bottles of blood. Um, this helps Knight greatly, but still not enough for him to, re to, his, to return to his full strength. Um, here we get some character bonding with Wine and Knight. Um, basically, I just want some scenes where Wine is pushing his ideal partner traits onto Knight. Like, um, like one fantasy would be the guitar thing. He would love it if his partner would play a love song for him. So he finds a stingy old guitar with, that has some strings. Like maybe there's a string or two missing, but overall, most of it's there. You can tune it okay, and it'll play decently. It's a movie. We can fudge this a little bit. Um, However, Knight can't actually play, but Wine convinces him to spend some time learning um, for love. Basically, Wine is trying to manipulate him to be the person he wants in love. Um, having been a few days and running out of blood, Wine returns to Boy. Boy is now dead, as the blow to the head proved fatal and he bled out. Wine panics for a moment, but ultimately he did this for love. And also, like, Boy was married and he views the cheating as bad, so he's like basically trying to convince himself that what he did was justified. Um, so Wine believes what he is doing is ultimately good, but it really, but in reality it isn't. Um, Wine isn't sure what to do for Knight's food and for the time being gives Knight some of his own blood. You know, just doing the bottle thing, but like on himself, um, like how nurses do it with the, when you donate blood. Um, one day at work, T confronts Wine, wanting to speak with him. T apologizes to Wine for his actions. He truly loves Wine, was ultimately conflicted with his sexuality. He has since come around and would like to pursue an official relationship. Um, T should be portrayed as genuine and honest here. He is truly sorry, but also understands if Wine does not want to start things up again. To his surprise, Wine agrees and asks him to meet at the abandoned building. However, Wine is mad. He believes he's being toyed with again and that T deserves to be toyed with back. Wine is mad that T would play with his emotions. Wine wants nothing more than to be loved and accepted and felt truly betrayed by him. In the dead of night at the abandoned building, T is alone waiting for Wine. Um, mirroring the scene in act one, um, where Wine is sitting in the abandoned building for hours and waiting for T, um, we reverse that. Um, when Wine was waiting for T, uh, Wine comes from behind with chloroform, the chloroform tea or like knock him unconscious. I couldn't think of like a great way to do that, but that's for tomorrow. Um, as wine toys with tea, um, tea is freaking, uh, oh, I jumped ahead. Um, wine comes to from being knocked out um, and he notices that he's tied up next to the dead body of boy. Tea is freaking out and wine explains his reasonings as Wine toys with tea and starts taking his blood. Knight shows up. Knight was suspicious of wine and followed him here. He is horrified by the scene as he believes wine was feeding him animal blood the whole time. Wine freaks out saying he didn't want to use Knight. Knight unties tea and tea escapes. Wine is hysterical as he has been caught and his dreams are once again dashed. Um, Knight consoles him telling him that he truly did love wine but he refuses to prey on humans. As the sun starts to rise, Knight crumbles to ash. Um, wine falls to the ground as police sirens start to wail louder and louder as they get closer to wine. Um, as for the backstory for T, um, this, not a great idea, but it was one that I thought of. Um, for I'm, tea or for night? Huh? For tea or for night? For night, I apologize. Mm -hmm. For night, I wrote tea, yeah, I did a lot of, I kept, I also wrote tine instead of wine for a lot of this, <laughs> because I kept thinking about together the series. <laughs> um, I'm thinking Knight was very ill, um, and his parents made a deal with a vampire, and in exchange for Knight's recovery, the parents are gonna die, he's gonna suck their blood, like, it's an exchange. Um, the vampire does heal Knight and leaves him abandoned in a building to start his new life fresh. It could be some dumb vampire lore that, like, when vampires are reborn as a new being, they forget their past lives until, you know, they consume enough blood, become full vampires, and, like, gain their full strength, that's when they kind of remember their past a bit. Um, so throughout the movie, we'll see pieces of his slack story back um, getting pieced together as he slowly gains more strength. Um, I don't love this idea, but it's what I got. Also, fun facts, um, the director, whose name is Tanmarin Sukapisit, um, is also a politician. And in 2019, um, they were elected to parliament, becoming the first openly gender um, member of parliament in the House of Representatives and also identifies as non binary. Binary, I thought that was really cool. Go Thailand for this LGBTQ 
um, representation. So that's my idea of how you could make this a little bit better. I don't know if it's any good. I wrote this at midnight last night after finishing the movie. Bottoms up. Okay. Ugh. I think it was good. I like the fact that night that night definitively dies because I think that that was an open ending that didn't need to be left. Um, and I like that we clearly know which characters are alive and which aren't. So that already is an improvement for me. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about things that I would change about the movies because I think that you covered it pretty good. I want to talk about the situation with the actor that played Knight. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Okay, so while we were watching this movie, I did the thing that I do whenever we are watching Boys Love series. I look at the actors to see, have I ever seen them in anything before? And I noticed that the actor who plays Knight hasn't done anything for close to four, almost five years. Like he did a couple of movies with Gun Epipan, who um, is in Theory of Love, really famous Thai actor, The Gifted. And it was a, it was two movies that are related. The first movie is called Bittersweet Chocolate, and the second one I think is called The Gang of Cherry. And they're both LGBT movies as well. But um, after that, nothing happened. And I could not figure out, like, maybe he left Thailand and he went to wherever he's from because he's also half Swiss. And when I went to his Instagram page, which is at the life of Stephen F., so the at sign, the life of Stephen F., all one word, um, he has a breakdown of what happened to him. And basically what happened is um, someone who I guess was a friend uh, took some risque pictures of him. They're not explicit to the point where you're seeing actual genitalia but you are seeing bare butt cheeks pubic hair like they're they're very close to being fully nude in fact a couple of them are fully nude but they're edited as to not to show genitalia mm -hmm. and these pictures i guess were taken a long time ago before he started acting and once he did start acting the person who took the picture said now's my chance to make a little money and released those pictures in a magazine called macho plus and it effectively ruined his career. Nobody wanted to hire him. He couldn't get cast for anything. And he says very plainly that, you know, he felt like dying because everything had been taken away from him and he no longer smiles because he has nothing to smile for. And so, and he just generally expressed his feelings of loss and being lost. And it was, it was heartbreaking to read. And if you look through his short Instagram history, yeah, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. There's no smiles. There's no happiness, nothing. Um, so I took a look at the pictures. I'm, I'm going to be completely transparent with you. I took a look at the pictures because I wanted to see what was so bad about these pictures that would make it to where no one would ever want to cast him. Because, I mean, we have people in Boys Love movies or Boys Love TV shows who are like full on making out sucking people's Adam's apples, you know, putting lips to people's kneecaps. Like there's a lot that goes on in some of these shows. I think what made it so bad is that these were older pictures, but one of the sets of pictures, he's semi nude and he's holding like men's erotic magazines over his genitals. And I think that was suggestive of him being gay in real life. And I think that is the reason why his career ended because we've talked about this before on the show is people are perceived as being gay in real life especially if they're supposed to play a more masculine character a lot of the industry doesn't want to fuck with them they either want you to be like super delicate feminine small men and then if you might be gay in real life it's not that big of a deal or they want you to be extremely straight percept perceived mm -hmm. and having pictures that imply that you may actually be interested in men is kind of a okay we don't want anything to do with this one and so it effectively ruined his career and it's really really sad because he wasn't the best actor in the movie but he did his part like I think my favorite acting part for him was as he said goodbye to fluke and he gave him like that last kiss goodbye he was very tender in that moment and it came across as not acting mm -hmm. and so I would like to see him in more movies and I plan to watch Bittersweet Chocolate and Gang of Cherry just to see what they're like. Mm -hmm. But it's it's a problem that the industry is still grappling with. This happened to him in I guess 2016 just this past week. 
a celebrity couple couple has been outed in Thailand. Mm -hmm. um, it's an actor by the name of In Sarin. Um, and somebody did a bunch of comparisons of his Instagram and another actor's Instagram. And they noticed that they had multiple pictures there where they shared the same clothes, where they had pictures of the same food that looked like they were coming from the same restaurant setting. Um, and there were some rings I guess that they were wearing that look like matching rings and so it has been heavily implied that they have are a couple and have been a couple for a while and they were effectively outed now neither of the actors have said that they are gay neither of the actors have said they're in a relationship with each other so this is an effective outing in terms of this what the public now perceives it's the narrative that's been put out there but I mean the picture the picture history is very compelling and so if you wanted to say, well, based on what I see, this looks like a very intimate relationship, especially as they don't tag each other. And a lot of times when you see people that have pictures where people go to the same place and they do the same thing, if there's not something that they want to hide, then they'll maybe tag the other person, like photo taken by XYZ underscore. But that didn't happen with them. Instead, it was like, I'm here by myself. I'm on a solo trip. So yeah, it's, it's hard because on the one hand, the general public that I've been exposed to on Twitter that speaks English have been very supportive. I don't know what things are like in Thailand, but in Saran, he's in a show that is currently broadcasting now. And it's a straight Lockhorn. It's, it's a woman having to choose between two male suitors. And this is a really popular show. And that's the reason why this news is so big, because it's a popular show, popular actors. This was considered a moment for his star to rise. And so I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if people are going to abandon him. I don't know if his career is going to be at a standstill as well. Um, but it shows that even though we watch these boys love shows and Thailand sees, seems so extremely progressive at the same time, homophobia exists everywhere mm -hmm. and there's these types of reminders to remind us that a lot of this sweetness and and cuteness and everything else we see in boys love it is pleasant to see but the reality of it is it's not easy and the entertainment the people who make the entertainment most of the directors screenwriters all those people they're mostly gay men mm -hmm. most of them are gay men but for some reason they're still falling under this idea of, yes, we can make game media and we can be in the entertainment field, but our stars have to be straight. Right. And it's just really sad. It's really, really yeah. sad. It is really sad. I mean, I think it's a testament to Fluke's acting for him to be like out and still be getting major roles, you know? Like he's probably, he, he has to be the most, successful like out actor and I looked it up he is actually out okay. um, um he is out and he's got to be the most successful one that I can think of you know because he's been landing some lead roles and I hope it continues for him too you know I hope after until we meet again he does continue to get good leading roles you know because I will say I think Luke's one of my favorite boys love actors I just think he's got great range like mm -hmm. even if he's given a shitty script he is committed. I think he. I think he's really good at making you feel like his characters are truly in love with whatever his pairing is. Like just the way he smiles and looks at his co-star, it's very compelling. You know, um, he's a really, really good actor. Like a genuinely good actor. He delivers lines really well. He doesn't. He overacts if it needs to be, depending on the show. But you know, like in. Red Wine the Dark Knight, he had some moments of just like good subtlety, like that very first scene. I think he did a really great job in it, you know? Like, oh, yeah. He told, I don't love you. And like, he just like the way his face changes so subtly, it's so good. Like, just watch that first scene for his acting alone. Like, it's great. Yeah, I think he's a great actor. I like him. I like Kuhart, who was also in Until We Meet Again, who was also another out actor. Um, I think that there are places where out actors and actresses can be, mm -hmm. but you have to fall under very specific parameters for them to allow you to be out. 
Right. Like you can be out, but you don't have to, you can't have an identifiable partner. You can't put intimacy b between you and your sexual partner or your loving partner on your Instagram or in public. You can't really be seen together. You have to be a stereotypical gay man in order to be able to be accepted as gay in the industry, unless you're 10 tins up. But yeah, you have to be feminine and small and pretty and, you know, not scary, not seem like somebody that a guy would run into in a locker room and not suspect that this is a gay man. Right. You know, it's a lot of, it's fear-based, you know, which is why I have to give a shout out to Tin Tin Sub. Um, I'm not sure what his real name is, but he is an actor who was in Gay OK Bangkok. He was also in Friend Zone. I follow him on Instagram. I don't know if you do, but he gets a lot of work in Lockhorn. He does straight Lockhorn. He does gay Lockhorn. He does all kinds of shows. Um, you probably know him best for that one little video clip on Twitter where he's swinging his dick around in his basketball shorts. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You're like, I've seen so much. Uh, but... <laughs> Sam, what can I say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But he, he's kept a career and he's a very masculine looking man. Like he's tan, he's tall, he's fit. He has a longtime lover that he shares on his Instagram regularly. Um, but he's one of the few men who comes across straight when he needs to be and when he doesn't need to be straight, he's not. But he still gets active employment. But he's also not in boys love. He is very firmly in adult media like shows that are made for people who are maybe 25 and up. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I, I hope that things are changing. I hope they will start to change, but it's just a shame that no one wants to give this young man a chance, but I'm grateful that people are continuing to give Fluke the chance because his acting talent is undeniable. Right. Agreed. Agreed. All right. So we need to decide what we're going to be doing for our next episode, but I think it's almost decided for us. We still have two episodes left of uh, together because they're doing 13 episodes, not 12. Yes. So we can't review together next week because it's not going to be over. Mm -hmm. However, in of Love, Love Mechanics will be over because it's over this weekend. <laughs> so I would give you the choice. We can either do In of Love, Love Mechanics, or we can do Love by Chance and talk about the clusterfuck that is Kinkla and Techno and some of the themes in Love by Chance. Even though I do want to talk very positive about Love by Chance because it deserves, mm -hmm. but we have to talk about Mame and her insistence on men being raped. Yeah. Um, I think we should do Love Mechanics. And the reason I'm saying this is because I honestly don't know if I'll have the time to rewatch Love by Chance. Um, the next few weeks of work, I know I think are going to be pretty busy. So I think sticking to shorter series or series that are more fresh in our mind, like when Together is over and My Engineer, are going to be our best bets, if that's okay. I think it'll be perfect because we'll watch, we'll do Love Mechanics next week. And mm -hmm. then the week after, Together will be over and we can talk about Together. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's probably the best option. Um, do you want to tell everybody what you're watching right now, now that Why Are You is over? Oh, yes. Okay. The new show is Why, Why, Why. It is like a sitcom. It is so, it is so wild. This show's fucking crazy. I've never watched a Thai sitcom before. Um, uh, it's just really weird. Like the first two scenes, like, man, I don't even know how to describe this show. It's just <laughs> super weird. It's super quirky. It features Lay or Tao Lay from My Engineer. He's in it. He's a meme character this time. He's great. Um, I also love that everyone's like an adult and out of college. So like you have a more interesting color palette. It takes place in an apartment complex with very quirky characters. Um, and I just like it for like some of the visuals, honestly, because like I'm so used to watching a boy's love where it's just like them in a white t-shirt and black pants in a school with white walls 
or sitting outside by some plants and I'm like visually bored I'm bored so it's nice where like there's like bright colors and people are in fun clothing and there's um there's good trans representation too I love that I was literally thinking earlier before the show started I was thinking last week I was like man I wish there was like a boys love but with like some more trans characters. And I meant it more of like, I wish there was a leading character in a boy's love that was a trans man. I think that would be great for a lot of reasons. Um, but yeah, so like the building owner is a trans woman and she has two sidekicks and they are hilarious. They're my favorite characters. Mocha and latte. Mocha and latte and porkla. <laughs> I <stand laughs> They're so good. <laughs> but like the theme song is so cute and it's catchy. Why, why, why? <laughs> humming it. Um, they even do like weird quirks with the characters. Like the main character is supposed to be kind of like a cool guy. So they keep having him do this thing. <laughs> and it's like, they keep having him do it. And I think it's like a running joke. <laughs> it's just, it's really cute. If you want to watch something fun, um, it's shorter than most Boys Loves too. There's, there's only three parts instead of the usual four. So I think it's about... 15, 20 minutes shorter. It's a quick watch, really fun, colorful, exciting. I can't wait to see these two boys fall in love. I can't and wait. And it doesn't have bright on top and knee. That is like the biggest thing I was like, wait a second, where is our girl saying right on top and knee? Instead, yeah. it is Porpla being <laughs> obscenely weird. <laughs> oh, so weird. From the first frame, you're like, what did I start watching? Um, <laughs> There's a scene with a fish about two minutes in that you're like, <laughs> oh, we're in it. We're in whatever, whatever this is, this is how it's going to be. It's wild. It is. It is it's very broad comedy. There's nothing subtle about this at all. Oh, yeah. I also love the laugh track because the laugh, they'll put the laugh track for anything, even if it doesn't seem like a joke. A character will like wink and then it'll be like, <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> Was that a joke? <laughs> like, I don't know, but it's funny. Ah, uh, and I love that, like, they have, it's just, it's very meme -y. Like, at one point, I think that, um, Pun is his name, right? Pun? Blaze character? Maybe. I think it's I'm not in names. Pun. I think their names are not in Pun. But anyway, Pun goes to feed the fish and not thinks he's going to trip. So he grabs a hold of him to keep him from falling. And all of a sudden, they start playing Careless Whisper in the background. Yeah. Like, it's just, it's so <laughs> freaking random. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, take it take it as complete camp. Like, if oh, I yeah. had to describe it, it's, it's pure camp. It yeah. cannot be taken seriously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's fun. It's different. It's fun. So we're both watching Why, Why, Why. We're both watching together. We're both watching My Engineer, which is the best boys love on TV. Fight it. I, I'm glad you said it, because I was <laughs> yeah. last week's, I'm like, I think My Engineer has eclipsed together, in my opinion. <laughs> it is so fucking charming. I love this show. I mean, I just, I hate that more people don't talk about it, don't tweet about it. Like, it's getting more. I've noticed mm -hmm. I'm seeing a lot more content, especially about Ram and King. But, like, my engineer is perfect. It is perfect. It's so good. It's, Ram and King are great. The main couple are great. Um, the side couples are great. Um, oh, I love the show. I, I, literally, <laughs> the first thing I did this morning is I was, like, I woke up and I was, like, my engineer is out. <laughs> the first thing I think of is, superstar, where are you from? How's it going? Womanizer. It's playing in my okay. head. Okay. Um, so <laughs> this time it was my engineer when I woke up this morning. Wow. Yeah, I love it. And it was one of those shows where I remember like telling people I'm watching this show and no one seemed interested in watching it at all. And I think it was when we were doing the hangout. I'm like, hey, if you're not watching my engineer, you need to. It is the cutest thing on television. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad that it's picking up steam because they were having some financial struggles. And yeah. it would be a shame if that series couldn't finish because of the lack of viewership. It really deserves more viewers. I think it's going to be the sleeper hit of the year. I, like, already want a season two. Kind of. I just, I just, I just want more. Give me more. <laughs> I can't wait yeah, for the ramp develops. Yeah, even if I didn't get a season two, I would like to see that same production team do another series 
absolutely like do like an American horror story thing. Just switch it up a bit. I would watch that. Um, and I think it's really nice to see like usually when we watch boys loves it's like um it tends to be kind of a while between like 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 it's interesting that lay is in my engineer which is currently airing and he's the main character in why 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 like it's interesting yeah. that he has two ships going on because part of the boys love culture is to promote heavily with your boyfriend, winky face, winky face. So I think it's interesting that he was allowed to do that, but he is great in both of them. His characters are different in both of them. And he's does both of them, like he plays them differently too. Like he's a good, he is, he is the one to look out for. You, he is the one, he is going to be great one day. He is like, first of all, he's got the look. He looks like an idol. He looks like mm -hmm. a K-pop idol. Oh yeah. He's got he's perfect hair. That, so. Mm -hmm. He's got perfect hair. Too bad he can't dance on his Instagram. The poor boy. No, no, he. he <laughs> you know what? He it's just you're like sweetie. No, but it's good though because if he could dance as well, he'd be too perfect. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> God's got to stop you somewhere. So yeah, you know, I hope he's a shit person too. He can't be talented and beautiful and nice. <laughs> But yeah, he's he's doing really well. Um, I, I'm not going to give a review of My Engineer right now because when My Engineer concludes, we are going to review it because it's going to be the next review after Together because it ends it around the same, like the week after, I think. Yeah, I think episode 10 aired today. Yeah, so yeah. we'll be reviewing it after Together's over. But one of the things that is so refreshing about the Ram and King storyline is there's a lot of storylines not just in boys love, but in dramas in general, where someone is extremely persistent about pursuing somebody to the point that it verges on stalking. Yeah. And Ram and King never get there. No, it is the most beautiful natural progression. And there's some, this episode especially, oh, we can't go into it now. <laughs> there, but there's some great moments in episode 10 where it's like every episode, it just goes a little bit farther. And you're like, oh, I can't wait for it to, all come together because it's gonna happen soon and you're excited yeah so i mean i i recommend it to anybody if especially somebody if it's their first time kind of dipping their toe into boys love there's so many problematic elements of a lot of shows great shows but still like problematic elements right. and that's just not here and that makes it so nice to recommend to somebody right right i agree Okay, so my Instagram recommendation of the week, because I'm trying to keep with the theme, I recommend going to the Instagram account, Leleyo. It's spelled L-A-Y-L-A-Y-Y-O for our boy, Tele, because he's the king of boys love right now. Like, yeah, everybody's all bright and win, but it's all about Tele over in these parts. That man is doing double duty on his own. He is his own OTP. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. Uh, it's great. Yeah, I and he. How, Go ahead. Um, episode three of our show, and we've only done two of these because we didn't do it last week. Well, we didn't do it last week only because I wanted to talk about the actor from Gay OK Bangkok. Otherwise, I absolutely would have given you an Instagram of the yeah. week. But I am going to stick to it. I have already got a list of names that I will be giving out. So be looking for that. Um, there's a lot of industry people who I think are on the come up that I'm going to start recommending their Instagram. But I feel like as much as we talked about them, you have to go check out Leleo's Instagram page because he does a lot of really cute things on his Instagram page. It's not boring and I am one that I hate a boring Instagram page. So He's definitely check him out. He's a cutie. Okay. Uh -huh. Well, I think that con con concludes completes that word. <laughs> Drunk. Uh, um So we will be talking about Love Mechanics next week. Love Mechanics yes. just ended today. It is in, E N of love, Love Mechanics, and it is on the Studio Wabi Sabi YouTube page. So please go check it out so that you will be ready for our discussion next week. Yes. I will watch it too. Yes. I know you're, <laughs> I will tell you this. It is already acting wise, 
much better than Tosara, but you're going to want to punch someone smooth in the nose. Okay, cool. Yeah, so be ready to be angry. Cool. Yeah. All right, well, I hope everyone has a good week and stay safe. Yeah, stay Bye. Home. Bye.